But overall, it's a moral victory Monday, Jeff Kerr. It is. It's a moral victory Monday. I'm going to continue to say it. been going right up to the beginning of birds 365 welcome in i'm gonna call this right off the bat jeff kerr i'm gonna call this a moral victory monday i know everybody hates that term dick sirianni said that in his press conference there are no moral victories in the nfl but guess what i don't agree with that (laughs) i don't agree with that i thought the eagles overall Played pretty well yesterday. We're in the game, obviously, very disappointing. The fact they can't get off the field, which has been a narrative throughout the year against good quarterbacks, and they were facing a good one, a good young one, uh, yesterday and Justin Herbert. And and we know the numbers. What are they? 32 of 38, 356 yards, two touchdowns. Passer rating of 123.2. And somehow, uh, the Eagles lose the game only 27-24. Now, first of all, let's give credit to you. I give you the golf clap and saying that was your exact prediction of the game. You not only predicted the game correctly, you predicted how it would go and that the Eagles wouldn't be able to stop the Chargers late. Uh, They get the field goal, essentially a walk-off. There were two seconds left when Dustin Hopkins hit the easy field goal. Um, Larger thoughts from you. I don't want to poison the well. What what are your takeaways from this? And then I'll give you my takeaways. Well, in my takeaways on CBSSports.com, I kind of ripped John McGannon, the new one. Uh, It was, you know, when I had to do why the Eagles lost, I basically pinned it all on John McGannon not going after – the quarterback as much as he should. And when I rewatched the game, it did look like they were trying to do a couple blitz packages, but they just did not send enough guys. They didn't try to get Justin Herbert off the spot. They played the safeties high again. I did not like that. Guys were playing too far off the ball. And that was, you know, Justin Herbert had six incompletions. One was a spike. Uh, two were just missed throws by him. I mean, it happens. I mean, uh, look what Jalen Hurts said. Yesterday. Was it two? I saw one, but I haven't. Wa- I haven't rewatched the game. I'll rewatch yeah, there, it today. There was one. There was another one he threw uh, to Mike Williams. I thought that was a little off, but uh, I, I gotta give Darius Slay credit. I thought Darius Slay actually played a really good game against Mike Williams, and I know Mike Williams is banged up, but uh, you know, it really, it took a forty-nine yard catch that. Herbert had to put in a perfect spot, and Williams had to die for it just to even get it. So, I mean, that was really the only good defensive play the Eagles made all day, John. Well, I, you know, I'm not going to go that far. Obviously, it's fair. It, it's difficult to say the defense played well and the defense did not play well. So, 445 total net yards for the Chargers. Um, I know, look, this is Philadelphia. People are going to talk about the blitz, 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 blitz. I've talked about Jonathan Gannon about this off, you know, uh, off to the side at times. And, you know, I think, and it, it was true media who came up with this stat. So, um, and that's Tony Khan's company and uh, analytics company. The Eagles missed blitz more yesterday than they have all season. Now, most of that came in the first half, which I thought was interesting because Avante Maddox went down early, and it was clear they had some blitzes for him in the game plan, and they had to use Andre Satcher, who, by the way, held up, I think, relatively well when he was out there. And they let him blitz, uh, and and obviously it didn't work. Um, look, sometimes you got to tip your cap to the other guy. I, I mean, this this is why I call it a moral victory, Jeff, we, we talk about 80% completion percentage, and this is the fifth time, and that's horrible. We all know, and there's no spinning that. But you look at Dak Prescott, Patrick Mahomes, Tom Brady. Who was the, who was the fourth one? Who am I missing? Uh, Derek Carr. Derek Carr. Uh, and now Justin Herbert. <laughs> Derek Carr was over 90%, so I should give him the proper credit. Um you know, we've talked about the first half of the schedule versus the second half of the schedule. Well, the second half, all of a sudden, you know, the 
Teddy Bridgewater might be the best quarterback next week you're facing. Then it's Trevor Simeon and Daniel Jones is of the world. Whoever the Jets are going to roll out there that particular week. And on and on to Taylor Heineke. That's where I go. You know, that's the context. Okay, yeah, they've given up way too many easy completions to great, great, great quarterbacks. But they're great quarterbacks. You've seen this team against Sam Darnold, against Jared Goff. They can they can amp it up against lesser competition, and that's where I think you put in the moral victory aspect. They shouldn't have been in this game. No, no. I mean, I I sit there. This is what I, I'm I'm going to say something that's probably going to upset fans, and it, it's going to certainly upset the fan throwing bouquets at Nick Sirianni. He got fired up uh, after the game. Nick Sirianni is the best rookie coach in the NFL. He outcoached Brandon Staley. Yeah, the did. only reason the Eagles were in the football game is because Brandon Staley allowed them to stay in the football game. You shouldn't be have a chance to win when a quarterback has those numbers and a quarterback is that dominant. But there were the Eagles. I, I thought there were – I know people don't want to hear positive. It's ironic because people say I'm negative. When the Eagles win, they say, I work for the team when the Eagles lose. No, it's called objectivity. It's not the end of the world. They did some good things. They stayed in there. Look, I've said all along, and I'm going to say this as well as my main takeaway. I still don't know what the Eagles have at the quarterback position. I thought that twenty when the Eagles were down 24 to 17, and I thought that was the best drive of the year. For the Philadelphia Eagles. I thought Jalen Hurts was great um, extending the play on the two third and fours, the acrobatic conversion. He made all the throws. He tied the game. The moment, we always talk about the moment not being too big for Jalen Hurts, but ultimately, I don't know what we have in this starting quarterback, but I do know what we don't have. And what we don't have is stinking Justin Herbert. Well, not many teams do, John. I We got to say that. But, yeah, I, I got to – look, this is one thing I loved about Nick Sirianni yesterday. And, I, you know, I think I talked about this with you last week. I know I talked about it with Jody Mack. We have more trust in Nick Sirianni continuing to run the ball and continuing to do whatever he could to win a football game than Jonathan Gannon doing what he did against Detroit. And, you know, Sirianni, I think seven of the first eight plays were passes. And I'm looking at, okay, Nick, Nick might be trying to get a field for his quarterback, something like that. And then all of a sudden the run came. And then you use the run to set up the pass. I think that really let Hurts loose. And the only bad throw from Hurts after Nick was starting to run the ball a little bit was that throw to Devonta Smith in the end zone, which is inexcusable. Jalen Hurts has to make that pass. No ifs, ands, or buts. Justin Herbert flicks his wrist. That's a touchdown. So uh, – Again, I thought Jalen Hurts played well. I definitely thought he played great in the second half. Seven for eight, 112 yards, perfect passer rating, a touchdown. And his incomplete throw was to throw to Devonta Smith. I mean, it's a throw you got to make, but he still played yeah. great in the second half. Well, and he did leave, and, and to Jalen's credit, he mentioned that he did leave the two touchdowns on the field. There was also the early throw to Dallas Goddard with just a poor throw. Should have been an easy touchdown. You know, that's part of my concern. If you look at the first half, um, and you're right, I, I think, you know, if I can surmise what Nick Sirianni was thinking, look, the Chargers were banged up in the back half. Uh, let's see if we can bet in the secondary, in the back seven. Let's see if we can take advantage of it. Obviously, they think we're going to run the ball. Let's see if we can surprise them early. And it didn't work. And if you look at those first half stats, Jalen Hurts was four of nine for 54 yards. And then the running game started to pick up and you saw the wide open receivers, mainly Devontae Smith. That's what Jalen Hurts can do. He can throw to open receivers. What he can't do is throw with anticipation. He can't throw receivers open, which you have to do in this league, which you saw Justin Herbert do, except for a couple of, occasions Herbert was 15 of 18 for 160 yards and a touchdown in the first half yet the score was 10 to 7 you now why was the score that. 10 to 7 yeah because two fourth down stops 
Now, when everyone says about all the bad stuff about Jonathan Gannon, and feel free, plenty of bad, those are turnovers. Those are turnovers. And the Chargers came in as one of the best fourth down teams in football. Oh, they were nine of 13 on fourth down coming in. Eagles stopped him twice and stayed. That's how they stayed in this game. Now, Brandon Staley would have been a little bit more conservative, taking the field goals. Game's probably over by that point because the Eagles are not capable of coming back, especially with a quarterback that is completing uh, passes and, and doing things as easily as Justin Herbert. And the last thing I'll bring up with you, Jeff, is the defensive line. They stink. They do. They, they stink. Yeah. And that was supposed to be the strength of this team, along with the offensive line. That's how they were built. That was the plan. And guess what? Fletcher Cox isn't playing well. Derek Barnett's not playing well. Josh Sweat's not playing well. Man, I got news for you. After the great start, Javon Hargrave isn't playing well any longer. They they drop back again 38 times. Justin Herbert got hit once. And the one time he got hit, it was a blitz. It was Steve Nelson flag. So what? technically, you know, statistically he didn't get hit. No sacks, no quarterback hits, no takeaways. All right, if you want to blame Jonathan Gannon and say Fletcher plays too much four-eye technique or Ryan Kerrigan shouldn't be playing four-eye or Josh Sweat, great. You're telling me these superstars can't get off a block against Storm Norton? And who's that right guard? I, I can't even remember his name. Uh, yeah, who is the right guard? <laughs> that, they they yeah. had an injury. It's a there. rookie fifth-round pick. I know that. Oh, uh, Brandon Hymes. That's it. Yeah. Um, that defensive line stinks. Yeah. Um, I, I'll say this, John. When Derek Barnett got the neutral zone infraction yesterday, I'm like, well, that's four penalties for Derek Barnett this year. He has more um offensive um neutral zone infraction defensive all side penalties than he does sacks this year. That is not good. I I was furious at that defensive line because and look, this is where I kept saying. If you have the number two, number three overall pick, you better be getting Kayvon Thibodeau. I don't, I don't care what quarterback situation. They need a difference maker on that defensive line. And Fletcher Cox ain't getting the job done. Look, Javon Hargrave has every right to, you know, throw his defense coordinator under the bus. But by uh, the way, he did not do that. Anybody, and I get I didn't, hear, people, I didn't hear the press conference, so, you know. I get why people said it, because what Javon said is, I ain't the defensive coordinator. Now, I, I – I know Javon. Javon is just constantly like, this is my job. That was what he was trying to say. I ain't the defensive coordinator. People ask him about blitzes. He doesn't know what he just does what he's supposed to do. That's what he was trying to impart. I think people took that the wrong way. He'll probably yeah, I, yeah I, I didn't get to see that part of the press conference yesterday. So I'm like, I, I'm sure there's more to it than that. But. Yeah, he 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 was just trying to say, look, you you do what you're told, you do your job. I think it's ironic because of Philadelphia. Now, they don't blitz a ton, but they blitz more yesterday than they have all season. Yeah, and it didn't I, work. Yeah, it I didn't think, work. I think it was like 8.9% going into yesterday, and it went up to 14. So, yeah, they definitely blitzed more yesterday. And, you know, you're right. It's Derek Barnett just isn't good. Uh, Josh Sweat, they might have prematurely paid. Um, you know, again, it's not, it hasn't been a good year for them. They, they're just not getting to the quarterback, John. And look, I, I think Justin Herbert, this is what I really like about him. He seems to, I thought the Eagles were going to try to do what Baltimore did yesterday um, against him. And they kind of did. Here's the problem. Justin Herbert, A, learned from it, and B, the Eagles don't have the personnel the Baltimore Ravens have to get Justin Herbert off the spot. And I, I'm thinking to myself, okay, who is going to make a big play for that? Butcher Cox? No, I can see why the Eagles would try to entertain train offers for him. Uh, Javon Hargrave? Well, he's a defensive tackle. You know, this guy ain't Aaron Donald. They got no pressure from the edge rushers whatsoever. You have to send extra guys because their defensive line just can't generate that pressure. It's it's beyond frustrating how this defense just kind of allows teams to get yards left and right 
And, you know, this is where I will defend Garrett. He doesn't have the personnel. That's where you got to get a Kayvon Kimmel. That's where you got to get a difference-making linebacker. There's something in there. You you have to get this defense better this offseason. No, and I, I think people don't realize, and I've said this pretty much since day one, I think people don't realize how much the Eagles miss Brandon Graham and how much that has impacted their defensive line as a whole, his ability to uh, hand handle that uh, sort of base end spot in in what would be Jonathan Gannon's uh, defense. I I don't think Josh Sweat is a bad player. I just think he's playing out of position. He's trying to play that base end spot now. He should be the weak side end where Derek Barnett is playing, and I think he'd be fine. Uh, Fletcher is having the year he's having, um, and he's not happy with this scheme, but come on. If you're a great player, you can get off a block at times, and he's just not doing it. So whether that's a dissent or um, – which is possible. At his age, he's played a lot of football. Maybe he's just a descending player. Or if he's that unhappy, Howie Roseman probably should have been uh, – had more of a sense of urgency to try to move on from Pletcher Cox. <clears throat> but then you talk about some of the younger players on that defensive line. We talked about the depth. Well – the depth is non-existent. Um, the depth, and, and again, this goes back to Brandon Graham. You know, it's great to say Milton Williams, he might be a, a solid player down the road. He's not now. And when you throw in some of those backup defensive tackles, whether it's Marlon Tui Pelotu or, or Hassan Ridgeway, that's been a disaster. I, I, I mean, when you bring – when you bring uh, – um, your whole plan on defense is building on this defensive line and building through this defensive line and they don't perform. I I don't know. I, 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 I mean, sure. If it makes you feel better, blame Jonathan Gannon all you want. Um, could he play more press coverage? Certainly with Darius Slay, but then you lose um Avante Maddox early in the game he was able to come in for a little bit but then left again you lose Slay late and and then you talk about all these young corners four of them didn't even dress the whole inactive list was corners you know Josiah Scott which would have been nice to have because you lost your nickel corner but that's sort of you bet and then the three guys the Mac McCain's of the world the Tay Gowans uh Carrie Benson, obviously, they're not even dressed. Which one of these guys are you going to cut when you have to keep Jordan Howard on? This I team? would think it would be Mac McCain, but you know I haven't seen him. I, if <laughs> if I didn't see his name, I wouldn't know he existed. Um, I would think he would be the guy, but yeah, Jordan Howard uh, has to be on this fifty-three man want roster. They're out of practice squad elevations for him. Obviously, Miles Sanders still has another game to go on the injured reserve. So you'd think Jordan Howard would have to be elevated to the 53-man roster, and he's played. He's deserved it. And then I look at the offensive side of the ball. We'll get this in before our first break as well, uh, Jeff, for all the good things. And I said a lot of good things, and obviously they were able to run the football again. What did they end up? They were at uh, 100. Yeah, 39 carries. I think it was 176 yards, I think it ended up. Yeah, what's where? Yeah, I mean, 176 yards on 39 carries. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's good. <laughs> That's pretty good coming off of uh, a week where you were over 200. But I will say this as well. It's not how you want to play in the modern NFL. It's not how you want to play. I, I, I mean, that's the quarterback throw a little more. I agree. But I got to give the coach credit. He's using the run to set him up. I, I, I know it's. But where are we in this? Where are we? What is – I've been saying this for almost the entire year. What is the goal of this season? And there is a disconnect between um, Howie Roseman and Nick Sirianni because Nick Sirianni's just trying to win a football game. And which he should do. He's the head coach. But yeah. <laughs> but, uh, again, where are we? Where are we? Because they certainly don't want to play football this way. They don't want to be trotting out 13 personnel. I, look, I like Jalen Hurts, but 
and I think the Eagles need to give him the opportunity. Jeff, but, give me your quote one more time about the it. It might be half decent, but you see, this is where I'm at now. I don't think their quarterback for 2022 is on this team right now. I I, I hate to admit that because I think Jalen Hurts played well yesterday, well for you know, my standards, and you know I I like Jalen Hurts, but I just don't see it, John. Uh, it's you know. Well, you don't see it when it's glaring. And this is what I wrote about Philly Boys. It's going to be up today. It's glaring when you see the other side of the field. And you say, that's why the best drive, I'm calling it the best drive of the year for the Philadelphia Eagles. And I said, wow, that was pretty impressive. And they tie the game at 24-24. And then I looked at the other side of the field and I said, I don't know, you know. You, you let out sort of a sigh. And that's the difference between the margin of error for the way they play is so small when you're playing a great quarterback. And they ran up against a great quarterback. And to me, that's the biggest problem. Of what- uh, I'll give you one. The Eagles win that game at Justin Herbert's their quarterback yesterday and Jalen Herbert. Oh, God, they win that game by three touchdowns. Yeah. Uh, I, Brandon I mean, Staley you know, making mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake. They win that game by three touchdowns if you just change the quarterbacks. Yeah, three it, touchdowns. It, it's insane. Like, you know, I and I get Eagles fans that, you know, feel they can do better at quarterback because – they can. And look, this is a knock against Jalen Hurts, and he's only played, what, 12, 13 career starts? Okay, fine. Look what Justin Herbert's doing in start 21. You know, look look what Patrick Mahomes did his first two years. Uh, you know, Matthew Stafford's a really good quarterback. Uh, again, you know, Dak Prescott. These are, these are the guys you want. You want that elite-level young franchise quarterback. And Justin Herbert's that guy. Like, I don't know – how the Chargers got the, the gift of God and the Dolphins passing on him, but that franchise is going to be good for a very, very long time, no matter what Brandon Staley does to keep the, you know opposing football teams in the game. And by the way, when I said, because Sander, our producer, Xander Krause, put this up on Twitter, when I say Nick Sirianni is the best rookie head coach in football, and by the way, I mean that. He's the best rookie head coach in football. But my larger outline there is why you don't want rookie head coaches and why continuity is better than, yeah. I mean, they all stink. He's just the best of a bad lot. Uh, and we know some of the other circumstances. Obviously, we know Dan Campbell's circumstances and David Culley's circumstances. Arthur Smith is seeming to do a, a, a little bit of a, a better job in recent weeks. But, man, this is the best year for the case of continuity for being the Pittsburgh Steelers, I always like to say, then the alternative always, always, always lean on continuity more than the other thing. And that's where I say, look, if you start and Jim Schwartz, I, I, I say this all the time. You used to use the term startup toss. He used to talk about it with young players. You see it all the time with young players. Same thing with the young coaches. You have the startup costs. So if you want to fire Jonathan Gannon or you want to fire Nick Sirianni, that means you just start over. Now, Jeffrey Glory can go get a veteran coach and you wouldn't have as many problems. But we all know, you know, the last thing he wants to do is uh, kind of usurp some of the authority he sees back post Chip Kelly. Uh, so I don't see him going down that route. So, Look, you're going to have growing pains. Stay growing pains. We'll continue to talk about this defense and Jonathan Gannon after the break. There's a lot to complain about. But overall, it's a moral victory Monday, Jeff Kerr. It is. It's a moral victory Monday. I'm going to continue to say it. Best game of the year. They played their best game of the year. That yeah, I got to think about that. I'm going to mull that uh, during the break. Uh, we're going to have an hour two. We're going to have our buddy Paul Domowitz. He's going to help us break down this game. Until then, and obviously he's working with the thirty thirteen with Mike Tannenbaum, Joe Banner. He's also working with us, Billy Mag, Eagles Report. We're going to have Domo hour two. Before then, Jeff and I will continue the autopsy of the Eagles' latest loss, three and six. But they're still in it. They're still in it. You saw what happened around the NFL. We'll talk about that and much more. Monday edition 
Birds 365 coming back. Mm -hmm.